if you have current carrying wires like here, like what we see, I1 and I2, the two wires will interact with each other. You can think of one of the wires producing a field. The field at the location of the second wire, this is B2 due to I2, okay? It will interact with the current I1. When you apply the right hand rule, the four fingers representing the direction of I1 and rotate them toward the direction of the field B2, then the force, the thumb will point downward. So this wire will be attracted to the second wire. And if you repeat, if you take the first wire and consider the field created by the first wire at the location of the second wire, you will have another force which is also attractive going upward in that case. And the magnitude can be calculated like here, the force acting on wire one is due to wire two is equal to B2 I1 L. And B2 is in U I2 divided by two pi D. The distance here is D. So we substitute for B2 multiplied by I1 by L, you end up with this result. You know I1, I2, L divided by 2 pi D, and it is a force of attraction between the two wires. If we divide by L, we get the force per unit length. The force per unit length is mu naught I1, I2 divided by 2 pi D. It is attractive force if the currents are parallel the same direction. It is repulsive force if the currents are opposite to each other. We may use this result to define the ampere, the unit for current. So we may define the current like this. Two long parallel wires, one meter apart, carry the same current and the magnetic force per unit length on each wire is 2 by 10 to the minus 7 in Newton per meter, then the current is equal to 1 ampere. Also, we may define the Coulomb. If a conductor carries a steady current of 1 ampere, the quantity of charge that flows through any cross section in one second is 1 Coulomb. If in the figure below, I1 is 2 ampere and I2 is 6 ampere, which of the following is it true? So the two currents are parallel, so the force will be force of attraction. F1 is 3, F2. F1 is F2. F1 is 1 third, F2. From a Newton's third law, you are dealing with action reaction pair of forces. So the correct answer is F1 equals to F2. The action of one on two is the same as the action of two on one. Example, two wires each having a weight per unit length of one by 10 to the minus four Newton per meter are parallel with one directly above the other. Assume the wires carry currents that are equal in mid and opposite in direction. The wires are 0.1 meter apart and the sum of the magnetic force and the gravitational force on the upper wire is zero. Zero, this means the magnetic force is upward, the gravitational force is downward, they are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, so they cancel each other. Find the current in the wires. So this is what we have. The total force is zero. Gravitational force downward. Magnetic force is upward. So minus mg plus mu naught i1 i2 l divided by 2 pi d. They add to zero. So now we use this equation to solve for the current. Since the magnitude of the current in both wires is the same, so i1 i2 is equal simply to i squared. We solve for I squared, it is 2 pi d mg over L divided by mu naught. 
Now we are ready to evaluate and to get the value for i. We substitute for d, we substitute for the value mg per unit length. And this is a mu naught. So i squared is 50 ampere squared. i is the square root of that, which is 7.07 .07 ampere.